we can say that the values of m are limited by this expression 2l plus 1. So now we have solved our polar part and angular, as, sorry, azimuthal part. And we can now patch them up to our angular wave function. So recall that we have our angular wave function y of theta and phi to be equal to capital theta of small theta times capital phi of small phi. Now, this is our polar part wherein we know that it has a solution associated with the Lagrange polynomials and our azimuthal part has a solution which is an exponential function. So C times E raised to I times M times pi. So this is our angular part of the wave function. So plotting different values for m and l, we have here for l equals 0, our angular wave function will be just a constant. For l equals 1, uh, we would have uh, this constant times our exponential, which is arising from the azimuthal part, times sine of theta, which is from the Lagrange polynomials. So take note that m here is negative 1. That is why the argument of our exponential is negative. And l here is 1. Okay, for m equals 0, our exponential becomes 1. That's why we don't have an E term. And for L equals 1, our associated Lagrange polynomial is cosine of theta. So, we also have L equals 2 here. You will see that L equals 2 can have magnetic quantum numbers to be minus 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. So that is why we have 5 Lagrange polynomials associated with L equals 2. Okay, so the angular wave function gives rise to the different shapes that we observe in our wave function.